Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? So happy to be here with you today for another video. I hope that you've been enjoying the videos this week. Um, this is a pretty fun card. We're going to be using the fantastic Cane Wave uh, Weave 3D embossing folder, which you guys are going to absolutely love. It's amazing. It's this background back here. We're also using this great die set, which by the way, if you don't have the Hues of Happiness suite from the main catalog, you need to get it because it's amazing, but these dies are fantastic. This one here makes us look like a piece has been ripped out of a sheet of um, notebook paper, which I think is fantastic. And that's what I used out of this one. The die set is called Blooming Happiness Dies. And then of course we're using the free Beautifully Happy with a $100 purchase. My focus today is going to be on this really cool punch. It's new in the mini catalog. I love how it leaves that cute little scalloped end. It works for all of our little projects. It also has a ticket end as well. Sleeper in the catalog. If you haven't seen it, check it out. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get started because I'm so excited to do this card with you guys. Let me show you the inside too. There's the inside. It's a beautiful stamp set and very, very easy to use. So the first thing, we have our Cane Weave 3D embossing folder. So we're gonna use that first. I'm gonna bring my big guy out here. It's my big die cut machine, my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm gonna bring him out, open him up, and we're gonna grab our plate number one. And all 3D embossing folders only need a um, plate number four in the sandwich. So you're going to put the plate number one. That's our platform. We use it for everything. Then we're going to lay our four and a four by five and a quarter inch piece of this is soft succulent. We're going to put that in our machine. We're going to slide that in and we're going to crank it through this is plate number four so one the sandwich of the embossing folder with the paper inside and then plate number four it's going to make a snapping sound it's okay it's all that pressure being released <laughs> and then wait until you see this are you ready for the awesome wonderfulness that this is is this not the coolest embossing folder amazing i use a lot of emboss i mean i use a lot of everything i don't have really a style if i would have to say i think i like everything like i do cute i do treats i do shabby chic i do classic stamping i do techniques kind of i don't know i guess i do it all <laughs> I don't like one particular thing. I like everything. And look at this. Oh my gosh, guys, don't you love it? All right, let's get this machine out of the way. We're going to use it. Um, we're gonna, Let's just go ahead and use it one more time. So we're going to put in this platform. We're going to use now the regular sandwich, which is one, two, and three. So one, here's number two. Whenever you use a thin die, use one and two. Plate number three is the one that cut, gets cut into. So we're going to bring that one up here. Let me grab my piece that we're using. The paper that we're going to do in the right here, this little um, torn paper, this is my sheet that we're going to use with that. And let me show you the die. So the die for that, let me grab it again. I put it away so fast. And I should have pulled it out. Has two dies. One leaves this really cool, like cut little rectangle pieces cut out. Looks kind of like a open stitching. But this one right here is gonna turn this piece into a notebook piece of paper. So I'm just gonna lay it right there along. I'm gonna leave a little small edge, move it away just slightly from the edge. And then we're going to go ahead and place this over the top. We're going to crank that through. When it comes out the other side. And 
And we pull this piece off. See that little, um, that little die. I'm going to bring this up to the camera. Check that out. So when I poke with my pokey tool, these little holes. Okay, I'm gonna run my finger, make sure none of them stayed in. Sometimes they like to hang on there with their friends and you gotta separate them. Like two bad kids that are in school that, you know, always get in trouble together, same thing. <laughs> all right, so we gotta, I'm gonna throw all those little speckles in the trash can, I'll be right back. I certainly don't want them on my craft room floor. <laughs> All right, let's get all these plates and all this stuff and this machine and all the good goodness out of the way temporarily because we you know we need a crafting area here. This big guy takes up my crafting area. There's not a lot of room when you're filming for um, your spot, you know, for you to spotlight in and be close enough that people can see really well, but not so close. So there's like a fine line. So we have our two things done. We have our paper and um, see how it has that edge. And we're gonna work on fixing that. I'm gonna show you in a minute, but there's that so far. We have a piece of five and a half by eight and a half soft succulent. I've scored it at four and a quarter. And we're gonna burnish that. Have a piece for the inside that's five and a quarter by four inches. I have a scrap piece of basic white that we're gonna stamp our flowers on. And then I have two pieces here for other parts. So let's go ahead and I'm going to give you all the dimensionals and all dimensionals, all the dimensions. <laughs> I'm going to grab my scrap paper. And first thing we're going to do is eight and a half by five and a half. Soft succulent. And that's the card base and we're going to score at four and a quarter. That's our basic card. So let's go ahead and burnish that into make sure it's, it's even. We're happy with it. Okay. So for the inside, we have five and a quarter by four basic white. Okay, and then on the inside, I also put the strip right here. And I think, I don't know, I think this is five eighths of an inch. Let me double check. Let's see. Yep. So we have a piece that's five and an eighth, five eighths by five and a quarter DSP for inside. So let's just knock that part out of the park. <laughs> so let's grab my silicone mat. We're going to stick this little guy. This is from the um, Country Gingham 6x6, six six, and I used this cool piece of gingham. There's all different gingham pieces, lots of colors, lots of patterns. This is this one I used right here. And um, I just thought it was so pretty on the inside, so let's go ahead and attach that on. I'm gonna leave a tiny border on the side. Okay. I'm gonna trim from the underside, just in case anything's overhanging. Even just a slight hair sometimes will, um, when you go to put it on your inside, it'll look funny. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach this piece to the inside of our card. And then the soft succulent piece that we're using on the outside that I ran through the um, die cut machine with the embossing folder, that um, cane weave 3D embossing folder, that piece is also 
five and a quarter by four. I'll write that down for you. Let's go ahead and get this piece inside all the way around a nice little border. So there's that. Okay. So this cane weave that's going to go right here over the top. That's also five and a quarter by four and it's soft succulent. And I'm going to put in parentheses EP for embossing or EF embossing folder. And we're going to go ahead and put our wet adhesive. Now I love using wet adhesive with embossing folders. Let me tell you why, because all these little nooks and crannies that are created by the embossing folder of this wet glue gets in them and bonds it so well to your card. So let's go ahead, put this. All right, fantastic. Just like that. So that's the outside. Let's work on our flower. We'll get that stamped and fussy cut out and then we'll worry about this part. So I'm gonna stamp in basic. Oh, not basic, good Lord. Tuxedo Black Memento Ink, the outline. So I'm going to go ahead and run this over the top and kind of pounce it over and make sure that it grabs nicely. And this is just a scrap of our basic white cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and place that in the corner here. Make sure that I push real good. Okay, we're gonna clean it and then we're gonna do the small flower that's gonna go right there on the inside. So we'll do that at the top. So we're gonna ink that one up. Here's the small outlined flower. All right, let's put that away. And we'll put that one up here in this corner. All right, we'll clean that. One and done. <laughs> now let's color it. So we're gonna color it with our soft, not soft, polish pink. I don't know why I said soft. <laughs> we're gonna use our polish pink ink. So we'll start with the small flower. So this is the um, inside. So we're gonna ink that up. And we, I'm going to bring it down here where I can see what I'm doing. Hopefully I can see and you can see. We're going to stamp that right there. And then we're going to stamp this flower. Let's do all the pink at the same time. What did I do the center? Yeah, we're going to use the center piece. Let me find that. There it is. We're going to stamp this a few times in polish pink because I want it to be nice and dark and stick out. So we're going to stamp it as many times as we need to till it's brighter than the outside petals. All right, one more time should be good. All right, so there's that inside. See how I... I did that. Let's go ahead and do the large flowers now. So we're gonna use this section here. We're gonna ink that up in polish pink. And we're gonna line up this flower. I'm actually gonna bring you guys down for a minute so that you can see a lot better. Okay. So we're gonna, I'm actually gonna bring you a little closer to me and then I'll bring you back up. All right, so see how this pink right here, we're gonna line that up 
with my flowers. So you just want to make sure that you're as lined up as you can be. I mean, like I said, this stamp set is pretty forgiving. So it's okay if it's not perfect. It is what it is. So we're going to press that down into place. And there is our flowers. Let's go ahead and clean those off. I'm going to do the center the same way. I'm going to use my circle and I'm just going to ink it a few times and polish pink until it's nice and dark and it stands out. I really want that center to be nice and bright. All right, let's do the leaves. So the leaves we're gonna use soft succulent. And it's also the um, color for the little pods up here that are closed because they're green and when they burst open, there's the flower that comes out of them. I'm not exactly sure what kind of flower this is. So those of you guys who know, just educate me because I have no clue. We're going to start with the pod on the small flower first. So right here. And we're going to line that up first. Hopefully I can see pretty good. There we go. So there's our flower pod. And because the stem doesn't have color, I'm going to go ahead and use my, um, my, um, Stampin' Blends. And let me go ahead and do this one while I have it out. But I just want to add a little color there. All right, and let's go ahead now and do our large flower. So we're going to start with the leaves. I'm going to ink that up. Oops. And we're going to line them up. So we're going to start... You know, just position it till it looks like it's over the top, and that's really the best that you can do. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. We're just going to press that into place. There's our leaves. You can see, we have the nice stem to match now. And now we're going to do this pod section, those two little pieces underneath those two flowers that are just bursting out, and that one as well. So I'm going to grab my next stamp, which is on the same block here. I have to clean it. This one right here. And we're gonna line this one up. So let me make sure I'm in camera that you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna line this up with my leaves and my pods and all my parts, and I'm gonna press that into place. There we go. And you can see how forgiving it is. Even if you miss it, it's okay. All right, so that's the stamping of our flower. Let me bring you back up so that you can see me assemble this card. We're gonna fussy cut out that flower. So I wanna bring you up a little. You're kinda too close, right? Let's bring you guys up where you can see what I'm doing. Sorry for the crookedness. There we go. I think that's pretty good, right? Are you guys happy with that? I think that's good. Let's move our flower back into the camera. And we are going to fussy cut it out. So I'm gonna grab my scissors here. And we are gonna cut around this area. I'm gonna get rid of that. I like to get rid of excess paper as I go. <laughs> So we're just going to wind our way around, leaving a little border all the way around. You can see as I, as I get to those edges, I chop those pieces off. So we're almost halfway. When we get to the peak, we'll be halfway. This is such a pretty stamp set. Okay, we're on the home stretch, working our way down the other side. 
I love that it's a two-step stamp that you can use two colors of ink and get these beautiful flowers. It's a fast way to color with stamp with inks, right? And our stamps instead of having to use like a marker. And what's beautiful about these stamps is that they're designed to give you high and low color. In other words, you can see on the leaves, there's some dark areas and some lighter areas, and that's part of the stamp. So it makes you look like an artist naturally because of the design. So it has a special texture on the, on the photopolymer that gives you that light and dark shading. I'm gonna cut that off and we're gonna round this bottom section. Okay, and let's cut our small flower out. Let's get rid of all this, we don't need that. All right, on to the little flower. This one's gonna be really quick. So this small flower, I'm gonna put this one on the inside near that um, plaid paper. And I chose that particular pattern because I thought it mirrored the um, cane weave embossing folder on the outside very nicely. So that's why I picked that pattern. But there's all different kinds of plaids in that pack. It's a pretty cool pack um, of gingham. All right, so there's our other flower. Let's get rid of all this and these jagged edges. And I'm gonna save this piece in my scraps. Throw the rest in the trash. Sorry for my creaky chair. <laughs> all right, so the piece of basic white for the outside, we're gonna stamp that next. Let's move this over, I'm gonna grab this scrap paper, I'm gonna lay it on there. We're gonna use polished pink ink and all over this piece, I'm gonna use the sentiment that says, for a very happy birthday. Okay, let's move this, let's ink. I'm gonna start up here, I'm gonna just get a little bit of that. We'll put some here and then I'm also gonna stamp off so that I have some texture. Okay, I'm gonna put this one here and stamp off, and then I'm gonna put a, a, a nice dark one, and then stamp off another dark one, stamp, oops, I didn't mean to ink that full strength, but let's put one here, then here, and here. Let's put another dark one right here, and then we'll put another dark one here in the middle. And then I'm just gonna fill in the rest with what's left over, okay? And then after I clean this stamp, we're gonna stamp it on this piece. I'm gonna slide it in and I'm gonna give it a punch. And there's my little cute scallop. I'm gonna do it one more time. I don't think I lined it perfectly. There we go, much better now. So there's my little scalloped end. And now I'm gonna stamp with our black ink. And we're gonna do for a very happy birthday. on this little piece here. Let me make sure I can see what I'm doing. Sorry guys, I have to bring it down a little so I can see. I don't know if I got enough ink on there. There we go, now I definitely have enough ink. For a very happy birthday. I think that's crooked, I'm gonna do it on the other on the other side. I love that each piece of paper has two sides. Much better for a very happy birthday. And that piece, I think I used the wrong, look at me, I'm grabbing a scrap piece. I'm like, why is this crooked? Because it's the piece is crooked. Let's try again. Okay, this piece is straight. We're gonna slide this in. 
let's pretend I didn't do that, okay? We're gonna save this little piece right here. And we're gonna stamp it out. Rewind, pretend that never happened. <laughs> All right, I don't know why I can't get enough ink on this one side. So then we're gonna stamp it. Hopefully this time it's going to be straight for a very happy birthday. Perfect. I think my piece was crooked. So now I want to make sure where I want that end to go. So I'm going to take the piece that fell off here and I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to pull it out. When I'm happy with how far it is, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm just going to make a mark right here. Okay. And I made a little pencil mark right there. And I'm just going to cut this straight. And now I want this side to be scalloped. So I'm gonna throw away my little scrap paper and I'm gonna use um, a piece, an extender piece of cardstock that I have that I keep off to the side. And I'm just gonna stick my piece to it. I might have to put a little more adhesive on there. I'm gonna get it to stick to the back here, okay? So this is my extender. Now I can put it into my punch right where it needs to go all the way to the back. I'm gonna flip this over and make sure it's straight and I will use my extender to straighten it. And then I will press and when I pull it out, there is my very happy birthday, the size that I want. I can pull my little extender piece off and move it to the side. So there's our words and this is called the Happy Labels Pick-A-Punch. We're done with our pink. Oh no, we're not done with our pink. We're gonna use a blending brush. So let me grab my scrap paper again. We're gonna close, close. I need to clean that in a minute, I will. We're gonna move this out of the way. We have all our pieces, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab some of that polished pink ink. I'm gonna start off the side. And I am gonna just blend some pink wherever I want it, wherever I think it needs it, just like that. We're gonna go ahead and close that now and put away our Polish Pink blending brush. Let's bring this back out. So this is where we're at. We have our soft succulent base. We have our inside white. We have our DSP for the inside, which was this strip right here. Here's our card, okay? We have scrap basic white that we are, we're using for these. Let's go ahead and glue this into place. So we're gonna put our little flower on the inside. That's our small one. I'm gonna grab my tweezers. And if you guys don't have tweezers, I'll link um, in the description below the tweezers that I like to use. All right. So that's the inside. So now we're gonna work on this outside piece. So the outside, this piece here of um, basic white was three inches by four and a quarter. So three inches by four and a quarter, and that's basic white. And that's for, I'm gonna put notebook. So you guys will know it's for the notebook paper. And then we used scraps of basic white for the flowers, right? And then this little piece was also a scrap and it's polished pink. But I think it was three quarters by whatever you want, whatever your scrap is. And then you're gonna do that little technique that I showed you. So we're gonna take, and this is for the punch, for the sentiment. All right, we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna crinkle it up. So we're just gonna 
make a mess of it. What are you thinking? Why would you do this? Because it's cool. Look at how cool that looks. That's why. So you're just basically gonna crinkle it up. When you're happy with it, you're just gonna uncrinkle it. And if you want more, you're gonna crinkle it in a different direction. You can also spray it with water, but then you have to wait for it to dry before you can adhere it. So I don't do that. And then I just move. I, I like instant quick. So I don't wait for things to dry unless I have to use my heat gun or whatever I need to do so I can keep on crafting. All right, so this piece here, we're gonna lift up with dimensionals. So we're gonna go ahead and grab my dimensionals and I'm gonna leave it all wrinkly. And I'm just gonna put three down each side and then two in the middle. One here and one here. Okay, and let's go ahead and pull the backs and we're gonna go ahead and attach that onto our card. So that was the piece of three by four and a quarter and we die cut that with our notebook die to turn it into a piece of notebook paper. Whoops, I ripped that one right off of there. I was, I was too strong, there we go. All right, I'll make sure all of them. <laughs> that one just doesn't wanna stay. <laughs> all right, I just wanna make sure they're all, yeah, I got them all. All right, let's go ahead and attach this. I'm a big mess, guys. So we're gonna place this on an angle, just like that. And you smooth it, and then you, you, you know, you, you rough up the sides as best you want them, how you want it to look, but you want that nice crinkled look. Let's go ahead and glue our flower, and this is gonna get wet adhesive. And we're gonna attach it to that piece of notebook paper. I'm gonna grab my tweezers again. All right. So we're just gonna lay it how we want it to feel and what we want it to look like. And we're gonna just press that down till it grabs onto our paper. And the um, this adhesive, just needs a second to bond. So as long as you just hold it and count to like 10, it should be plenty of time to really get it to grab. And once it holds on, it's on there for, for life. It's on there really well. Okay, so there's our crinkly paper. And again, we're gonna rough these pieces up how we want them. So now the next step is we're gonna do that little punch that we made. We wanna attach that in this corner here. Okay, but before we do that, we wanna make this a bow. So I'm gonna show you how to make this bow. And I also made a double of this bow on, not this past Tuesday, but the one prior, um, my night sky card that I used with the adorable owls. I did a t this bow, but not quite this small. I made this one a lot smaller. So I wanted it just in that corner. So I'm gonna take three of my fingers. I'm gonna hold on to this piece and let you know it have a little tail hanging off. I'm gonna just wrap around one, two, three times. And then when I have a tail on the other side, I'm just gonna cut, okay? I'm gonna get my ribbon out of the way. And the part that I just brought up, I'm gonna kind of hold that. And I wanna, I wanna smush these three loops that I've made together and pinch them in the center. They're going to form our bow, okay? And now's the time to straighten them, make them even before you cinch them closed, okay? So this long flat piece, the last one that we wrapped around, we're going to go around our piece and then we're going to put our tail through that loop we just made. And we're gonna pull it tight. And then that forms our loop. We don't need it that long, it's too long. Let's go ahead and cut it right there. So there's our bow and you can even it out a little bit, but not too much. And you want these ends not to be through loops and things like that. I like them to be free. So I always pull mine out. And we're gonna use some mini glue dots. So let's go ahead and grab those.
and we will put one there and we will stick our bow to it well not that part there we go stick the little knot and then I want to put another one on this end here and just make sure that my bow is nice and secure so I'm going to lift these loops and I'm going to kind of stick them underneath those loops so that it's nice and secure and we'll do the same thing on the other side so three of these little guys flip this side up kind of tuck this glue knot underneath and there we go okay there we go. So now comes the fun part. We're gonna attach our sentiment. And of course you guys know, these pick a punches are amazing. They're super fun and there are some tips and tricks to them. Um, watch tomorrow um, for Feature Friday. I will be doing um, information on all three of our pick a punches. So check that out. So we're gonna go ahead and attach some dimensionals onto the back of this. So we're gonna make sure we have maybe three. And we're gonna pull the backs off of them. And then we're gonna line our words up right there so that it's centered. And we're gonna press that down. Now the bow lifts this end up. So under here, we're going to tuck an extra one under there. So we're going to peel the back off and put it to the side so we can get it in the trash can. We don't want it to end up on our floor. And I'm just going to slide that in kind of underneath and then press that into place. And then that gives us a little balance because the bow pops it a little extra and then that gives a little extra. And if you, if you see it, peaking just use your um take your pick tool and push it in a little but there is our sentiment with our bow and let me throw this in the garbage and then the last step is to put our fantastic iridescent rhinestone basic jewels on so they come and you get small medium and large and i love these babies so i'm going to use a medium and we'll put that one over here on this cane so that it pops that color up. What I love about these baby jewels is that you see the color that they're under. This one's gonna look pink and it's gonna look pale because it's under that pale pink. I'm gonna put one on the darker pink and it's gonna look bright pink. And then that one looks green. They take the color that's behind them and I think that's just super duper fantastic. I love, love, love these iridescent rhinestones. You get 200 of them in the package, so they last. And what I love about them is that they go with so many colors, no matter what you put them on. If you put them under black, they get dark. You can use them under any colors and they are fabulous. So I hope that you enjoyed my project. Uh, let me throw my dimensions over a little for you. Take a quick peek, I'm gonna pull them away. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoy the whole process. I'm gonna bring my stamp set in. We're beautifully happy, we've been using that all week. This fantastic um, Blooming Happiness die, as I keep forgetting the name of it, but I don't know why, because I love that. And then don't forget about the cane um, weave 3D embossing folder that we used. I hope that uh, you got a lot out of this project. I enjoyed um, showing it to you. And don't forget tomorrow to come back and learn more about the uh, Pick-A-Punch. And I'll see you next time. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I love those so much. You don't know how much I love when you guys interact with me. So please do so. And I'll see you here next time. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping.